I can smell his hairspray around you. Literally. Did you get that on camera? You could yeah, burn yeah. the air with it, honestly. It's <laughs> <laughs> like light a fire. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, well, the it's not easy to look this good, I'm telling you. Hey crew, welcome to episode two of our weekly vlog. Uh, last week we showed you guys a bit of introduction to our home, our creative space and our awesome community here at Custom Commune. Tonight we're going to have a bit of a look at a couple of builds that we're doing. So uh, we've got a couple of really awesome projects that we're working on um, here at Custom Commune ourselves. Uh, plus we've got a few members here that are doing uh, the final touches on some really long term builds. Uh, let's check them out. So this is a long-term project that we've been doing at Commune uh, for one of our members. Um, he actually stacked his Triumph and it wasn't insured, so he said, build me a hardtail frame for this thing. So we looked everywhere, we couldn't find anyone that was producing a hardtail frame for a later model Triumph, one of the T100s. So we thought, fuck it, let's build one. Um, so we found an amazing engineering company um, here in Melbourne that's been helping us build this bike. So we actually started with a 3D scan of the original busted up bike and we catted up a new frame. So we changed the rake, we changed the stretch, uh, we put a Jixa front end on it and uh, this is where we're at. So this is something that we've been wanting to build for ages, but we never really had the opportunity to. Um, it's gonna be a pretty special build. We're going absolutely all out on this thing. And the best thing is it's gonna be fully engineered. So it's gonna be legal on the road. The frame is pretty much built out of three pieces. Basically all this section here up to the front is uh, one piece and it's been CNC bent, which means we can get these tight radiuses uh, without squashing the tube. The actual geometry of the bike is very similar to the standard uh, T100 Bonneville. Uh, we've just stretched the bike a little bit and it's slightly lower, but the riding position is gonna feel very much like a standard bike. We went a little bit more extreme with this and we put a Jixa front end on it for no other reason than because we could. I think they look absolutely awesome and I tend to put these front ends on most Triumphs that I build and we use a Cognito Moto wheel kit so we can get spoke wheels on these. So we have, um, not only are we doing all the cosmetics and uh, redesigning this frame, we're actually gonna do a lot of uh, performance upgrades on this thing as well. So we're putting on HSR Makuni carbs, uh, we're gonna go a cam, plus we're gonna oversize the pistons as well. Uh, so this thing is gonna absolutely haul ass and it's gonna look pretty crazy. So our next step for this thing is, uh, we've got a little bit more fabrication to do. No fucks given, huh? This guy. <laughs> Here we are trying to make movie magic and this motherfucker's grinding in the background. <laughs> a little bit of fabrication to do. So we're working out a seat system. We want to do a monoshock style seat that kind of flows in with the fender. We've still got to do some tank mounts for it. We want to try and make these invisible so the tank just looks like it's floating on the frame. We have to make some oil cooler mounts uh, and there's a couple of little bits on the bottom for things like uh, the electrics box and stuff like that. So, but it is 98% there as far as fabrication goes. All the hard stuff is done. After that, we'll basically chuck in all the electrics, get the bike running so we know it all works, we know that everything's got somewhere to mount to, and then we strip it down and send it out for, for paint. So we're going to do a lot of work on this over the next month in particular, uh, so hopefully you guys will see a bit of progress. If you have any questions on what we're doing and how we're doing it, or even why we're doing it, uh, definitely let us know in the comments below, and uh, we'll, we'll try and explain how we're doing things. 
Another build that we're doing here, uh, which is actually one of my personal builds, is a 1989 Sportster 883. It was just a cheap bike that we found on Gumtree and we thought that will make the basis for a rad little tracker. It, it had a gearbox issue when we first got it. It was an $11 little mechanism in the box, so it could have been a very easy fix, but uh, we had a few beers and decided to strip it down completely. So the plan for this thing is we're going to do a 1275 Hammer uh, Performance Big Bore Kit on it. Uh, we're going to put a Makuni HSR carb on it as well. We're basically redoing all the bodywork. So um, it's literally just sitting here at the moment. It's been a bit of a slow process. Nina's actually painted a tank for us as well, which I'll be back. I'll go get it. This is one of the very first things we did for this build. Uh, this is just a peanut tank. Nina had the great idea of scotch brighting it back on a drill, so it gives us this awesome texture. She's then um, done some of her floral patterns on it. So this is what we're basing the whole look of the bike off of um, on this take. So um, it's gonna look awesome. Andy's bike still rattles, uh, which he was trying to fix, so not so exciting. <laughs> still rattles? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Leo's here tonight to um, just do a little job, <laughs> which is very time consuming. Just put some fork gators on to uh, the Bonneville. So the whole front end's got to come off. Yeah, whole front end off to do this. So realistically, we just undo it all and kind of slide the forks out. My main job around here is just moving bikes from here to there, to there, to here, to here, to there. That's it. That's all I do is just move bikes. It is a full-time job. Maddie's a long-term member. You were here from pretty much day dot at the old space, I think. Very early on. Yeah, very early on. Yeah. 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 Um, unfortunately, we were out for a ride one day, just um, not far from here and Maddie's engine exploded, like <laughs> actually exploded. I think there was a loose bolt in the valves and it punched it through the top of the engine, didn't it? Yeah, hit the cam straight through the Hit the cam straight through the engine. So hot oil everywhere. And us trying to figure out what was wrong until we saw the big hole at the bottom of the head. Yeah, so it went into a storage unit until we had this space back up and running. It's been here for a year now, just over. and. Um, home stretch for him. He decided to tear it down to a bare frame, um, rebuild the entire engine uh, from crankshaft up basically. So split cases, blasted the whole engine, repowder coated the frame, and even had some amazing bodywork made for this thing. So I can't wait to see it on the road. It's been fucking ages. <laughs> it's been, yeah. And um, it's like literally this close to getting back on the road. So a bit of wiring, bolted all together. Bit of tuning. Yeah, sick, and then we'll be on the road. So. First big uh, trip for the vlog, we've locked in India. So we're doing a trip around Rajasthan with Nevermind Adventure. I'm gonna be the tour leader um, on this trip. So 
This is my third time riding through Rajasthan and uh, first time being the tour leader. I'm normally over there shooting content for these guys. So Jake, our man's coming with us as well and we're gonna do a daily vlog on our trip. It's gonna be fun, I can't wait. What about you, Jake? I'm up for it. <laughs> Look, Jake. Whether, whether or not we do content every single day, but we make it look good. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we will produce something. We will produce something. We want to capture everything that happens, the cities that we're visiting, the people that we're meeting, and the people on this tour as well. So really excited about this. So the tour is from the 1st of November through to the 14th of November. So we'll be over for a solid two weeks. Yep, pretty cool basically two weeks into the vlog and we've already locked in an international trip, which is pretty fucking exciting. So, um, yeah, we're really looking forward to it. We'll just do it really quick. I just want to introduce you so everyone knows that you're the man that's championing this. So, they don't, so I don't take all the credit and everyone thinks, yeah, Jimmy's building a fucking awesome hardtail, doing all this amazing fabrication, when really it's this guy that's doing it behind the scenes. So, um, Chris is actually our main man here when it comes to any fabrication, mechanical, pretty much everything. He's one of those all-rounders that's just been working on bikes uh, most of his life and cars and stuff like that. I'd be actually going out of bikes for a long time and then found the custom commune and yeah, reinvigorated me love for two-wheel transport. Pretty much from the day I first walked in here, I haven't been here, I've been here every day since. Um, that's no word of a lie. Chris is here more than I'm here. Straight after work, he's here until we close. He even looks after the space on weekends for us, so to give us a bit of a break. Um, I think we need to start being able to give him a bit of a break. Um, Chris also does our welding course, so another group course that we have here. Uh, he's our welding instructor, which just teaches all the basics and uh, the theory behind how to produce good weld. Um, and he's also a one-on-one -on -one instructor. Yeah, so Chris is our man around here for, for all this sort of stuff. And Chris is actually leading the build on this. So uh, he's looking after all the fabrication and a lot of the problem solving stuff. So. I'm actually really honored to be even, even to be asked to be a part of this one because it's, it's going to turn out a super little bike and hopefully it'll be the first of many that we push out of here. Um, absolutely sick frame. A hell of a lot of work's gone into the design phase of this. Yeah. We want this to look like a factory hardtail bike, you know, that's the goal. Uh, you know, we do our little stupid touches like the knobby tyres on a hardtail chopper, but, um, you know, if you're building one for yourself, you can make it look very much like a factory bike, and that's the goal. And it's easy. We want to make something where someone at home who has very limited experience could take everything out of their Bonneville or Thruxton and just chuck it in this frame. Like, it's literally going to be that easy. So um, Chris is going to help us make sure that that happens. Fucking good guy, this guy. And I'm not good on camera at all. <laughs> this space wouldn't be what it is without this bloke, I tell you what. So kudos to Chris. Uh, yeah, good man. <laughs> I've got a hundred really good close friends out of this place and I love it. Yeah. Really love it. Yeah. I don't work. I just hang out with my mates every day. That's pretty much what I do. Yeah. And a little bit of admin. What a better yeah. way to live. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. So if you guys have any questions um, about these builds, um, chuck them in the comments below and we'll definitely get back to you uh, next week and uh, let you know. Oh, fuck, I totally lost it. That would have been the perfect transition as well. So if you guys have any questions on any of these builds that we've just shown you or anything about Custom Commune, um, definitely chuck them in the comments below and we'll try and respond throughout the week and uh, chuck some of it in the video next week before we leave for India. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll catch you next time.